there's a reason that they are... Kindergarten is much like the middle child, <laughs> trying to find its place somewhere between pre-kindergarten and all the things that go on before children come to kindergarten and the primary grades. You know, as adults, we look back at kindergarten and we have this nostalgic view of play and the transition from home to school. And that's well placed and it's a good thing. But today we are thinking of kindergarten not so much as a specific point of entry into something more formal, but kindergarten as one part of a long continuum of education. In fact, the whole way that we think about kindergarten and talk about kindergarten has changed. The way we think and talk about kindergarten is at the heart of this three-part series based on the comprehensive kindergarten implementation guidelines prepared by the New Jersey Department of Education. Part one provides background in developmentally appropriate practices for five and six-year-old children. Part two looks at the classroom environment, the best materials and setup. And part three details the classroom schedule, how proper planning leads to fewer problems and more learning in kindergarten. Leading us on our journey is Dorothy Strickland, Professor of Education Emerita at Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, an internationally renowned authority on reading and language arts, and former classroom teacher. Our exuberant kindergartners and their teachers are from Red Bank Primary School, eager to show us high quality kindergarten today. We used to talk about readiness. Get them into kindergarten and get them ready for the real thing. Now we talk about emerging education, emerging literacy, knowing full well that everything that happens prior to kindergarten, really from birth <laughs> right throughout, is, uh, is very, very important. And there are tensions there because in the field, people wonder, well, um, aren't we supposed to be revving these kids up for the real thing? Or let them play, you know, they're still little kids. Well, the truth is high quality means that indeed we have exposure to high cognitive skills, high quality experiences, but they are engaging and they are playful and that we don't have to choose play as opposed to high quality cognitive education. Okay. Kindergarten teachers should be very aware that uh, 44 states, New Jersey is one of them, have just um, adopted common core standards. And all of us will be working toward those standards. Yeah, I Having uh, clear cut standards is going to help. But another thing is that they need to realize that, yes, the expectations are greater. There's no question about that. Not only for students, but for teacher performance. However, it doesn't mean that what they do should not be developmentally appropriate. That's the watchword. Yes, high level cognitive skills. Yes, opportunities for reading, writing. We still do it in ways that are engaging in ways that are appropriate for five-year-olds, going on six-year-olds, that has not changed and it won't change. Having a warm, inviting uh, environment in the classroom, uh, one that has uh, guidelines, one that has parameters for children, it's not just do anything you want to do, for sure, but indeed an, an atmosphere that's inviting and welcoming, and one that uh, says to children, I respect you and I care about you, and that we care about each other in this classroom. And when teachers set that tone with the children, you'll find that the children respond the same way with each other. They have a helping kind of nature with each other. And those are classrooms where lots of good learning occurs. It's really important that 
Our goals are the same for all the children. But we know that very often the pace and even the activity has to be tweaked a bit depending on the children. That differentiation that is so prevalent in every classroom um, certainly exists and needs to be addressed. So you will have some children who are struggling a little bit. And if you have that whole group and then you have the small group, you return to some of those same things, but you break it down a little bit for them. Um, and you make sure that they have the su extra support that they need. You'll have, and sometimes we forget, there are advanced kids in every classroom, no matter where they are. This is really important to remember. Um, and so you may want to spend some extra time with them, even with some materials that are a little different from the materials that you would normally expect children to um, address at this age. Putting children into situations where they can succeed, they have enough challenge that they can succeed and want to try again, is exactly what good teachers do. And where they feel inside that they can do it, they can learn, I can risk, I can try this. And even if they don't succeed the first time, I'll try it again. And that wonderful, that look on their faces when they just, you know, they know they've got it, it is just a wonderful thing to see. Uh, sometimes I say to teachers, you know, think about leading from behind. Now what I mean by that is establishing a situation where children feel a bit challenged and they want to try out something, but kind of step back and let them try it out. And um, be there to facilitate, but not always to be the one who tells them every single step along the way. And you'll find that children figure it out for themselves. And when they look up at you and smile, it just gives you goosebumps <laughs> because, you know, they figured it out. And you've been there as a guide, but, um, you know, we can teach all day, but the learning <laughs> resides in the learner. What was your learning goal last week? Assessment is one of the right. most important things that teachers do. When and assessment really needs to be thought of as integral to instruction because teachers are constantly observing, um, making notes, again, mentally or sometimes written notes about what children are doing. And so if you're using an observation checklist and collecting work samples, writing samples, those are dated and their periodic samples, and you look at those things over time. I think the key thing that I would want teachers to know is that there are three aspects to this. Number one, you want to collect information and review and consider and act on information about the individual child in relationship to him or herself. So at periodic times, you're going to be looking at individuals over time and their individual progress. You want to look at that child in relationship to the group. So that there are times when you want to take a look at who's way up here in that top quartile and which kids are almost there and others. So you, you want to kind of rank order them a little bit. Too often, that's all we do is rank order. And then the third thing is to look across the group and try to get a sense of, she seems like all my kids are having trouble with so-and-so. By golly, everybody seems to know this. So you kind of tweak the curriculum a little bit in terms of the things that you want to emphasize to a greater extent and those that you don't need to do very much with because indeed most of the children have them. It's a wonderful, wonderful time of life when children are open, they uh, want to learn, they're eager, they care a lot about everything that's going on around them, and you literally can see the progress from day to day. It's, it's an exciting time. For detailed information about best practices in kindergarten, Search online for the New Jersey Kindergarten Implementation Guidelines 
a comprehensive document outlining how to create high-quality kindergarten today. Funding for High Quality Kindergarten Today has been provided by the Foundation for Child Development. High Quality Kindergarten Today is a co-production of Advocates for Children of New Jersey and the New Jersey Department of Education.